What's up and good day to our honorable speakers, organizing committee for MySAM and Sarawak Research Society, all the scientific committee members, as well as the forum participants. Welcome to the international online forum about the current advances in partial least square structural equation modeling and methodological methods. Next. Before we begin the forum, there are a few things to take note. First, this forum will be two hour long and I appreciate if you could join the entire session. Second, this forum is recorded. Forum video and slides will be provided two days after the event. This material will be made available at my Sam Facebook group. Third, if you have any questions to the speakers, you may ask in the question session on the go to webinar dashboard. The number of questions addressed will depend on the time we have at the end of the forum. Next. Dear participants, this forum is organized by Sarawak Research Society and MySAM with the support of Emerald Publishing East Asia, Research Synergy Foundation, Pampanga Research Educator Organization, and Macau University of Science and Technology. We are very thankful for their support. Moreover, this forum will not be possible without their coordination and contribution for the organizing and scientific committee. This is why we are all here today. This forum aims to provide updates about the current advancement about PLS SEM and guidance to apply the advanced statistical technique in our respective research. It is also provide guidance to address some statistical and methodological issue and recommend resources to learn and progress. Next. Dear participants, I'm privileged to be the moderator of this international forum today. My name is Jackie Chia and I'm currently attached to University Putra, Malaysia. Once again, welcome to this forum, wherever you are from. Without further ado, let me introduce our honorable speakers for the forum today. Next. The first speaker we have, Professor Christian Ringer. Professor Christian does not need much introduction. As we know, he is a chair professor of management at the University of Hamburg Technology, Germany, and adjunct professor of the University of Waikato, New Zealand. His article have been published in top peers journal that you can imagine such as MIS Quarterly and Journal of Academic Marketing Science. He has been included in the Clever Analytics highly cited researcher list. Of course, Professor Christian is also the co-founder of Smart PLS and PLS Academy. It is indeed an honor to have Professor Christian with us today as a speaker. Next. The second speaker we have for today is Professor Marco Suster. Professor Marco also does not need much introduction. He is a chair professor of marketing at the University of Magburg, Germany, and an adjunct professor at Monash University, Malaysia. He is also the co-founder of the PLS Academy. His research and publication are as impressive as Professor Christian, as you can see the journals of his publication, such as Nature, MIS Quarterly, and so on. Moreover, he is among the top three most influential researchers in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and it has, he has also been included in the Clever Analytics highly cited researcher list. Although we cannot meet him in person today, we are so blessed he is with us today online. Yeah, <laughs> next. The third speaker. But of course, Professor Ramaya Turasami. Professor Ramaya is a big name in Malaysia. He's a currently professor of technology management at University Science Malaysia. Also, he is a visiting professor of Mingjiang University, China, and an adjunct professor at Samui University and University Tenaga National Malaysia. He is one of the pioneers in covariance and variance-based SCM. Thousands of students have been helped by him. That included myself. 
his work has been published in hundreds of top journals and he is still going on strong. We are delighted to have him today as our speaker as well. The last and the fourth speaker today we have is Professor Next. Next. Uh, sorry. The fourth, the fourth speaker today we have is Professor Wen Long Xiao. Professor Xiao is the professor in the Department of Business Administration of Zhejiang University of Technology, China. He is one of the top researchers in statistical analysis and structural equation modeling in the Chinese speaking world. To date, he has published more than 57 journal papers and several books using advanced statistical techniques. Many of his works have been highly cited in Web of Science Journal, the top 1% by citation based on field in clever analytics. He is also serving as guest editor of several top tier IS journals. I last met Professor Xiao in Macau 2017. Right now, I'm really pleased that he is with us today. Next. This international forum has attracted about 1,800 participants from more than 65 countries. Before we begin our main agenda today, I would like to invite Professor Ramaya to give an opening remark. Prof, thank you, the thank floor you, is yours. Uh, thank, okay, thank you, Dr. Chia, uh, Dr. Jackie. Yeah? Uh, I would like to begin today's uh, session by thanking Dr. Jackie, Dr. Hiram, Dr. Cham, Dr. Mumtaz, Dr and the rest of the organizing team for organizing this wonderful event. I, would, I also would like to thank Professor Christian Ringler, Professor Markus Sastep, and Professor Xiao Long Wen for graciously accepting this invitation and gracing this event. It is truly wonderful to see this gathering of experts in PLSM. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all the other participants who have joined us from far and wide. Wherever you are from, a big welcome and a big thank you for your attendance. I truly hope this session will be helpful in your endeavor as a graduate student or an academic in your future undertakings. Finally, I would also like to thank Emerald Publishing, who have generously provided this platform at our disposal for this event. I sincerely hope this cooperation will continue into the new future. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you, Jackie. Over to you. Thank you, Professor Ramaya. Now let us begin with the first topic of discussion. Next. The first topic for today is about the fundamental understanding about PLS-SEM. Next. Since it is about PLS-SEM, of course, it is about PLS-SEM, why not we start with Professor Ramaya on what is PLS-SEM all about? The floor is all yours. Thank you, Jackie, again. Uh, hi. Uh, to address the question posed by Dr. Jackie, uh, I will start with a brief, brief description of structural equation modeling, then a bit of the history of statistical analysis development, and finish off with the different way the variation in structural equation modeling treats the constructs in the model. Uh, structural equation modeling has become an important statistical tool in social and behavioral sciences. It, has cap it is capable of modeling nomological, yeah, nomological networks by expressing theoretical concepts through constructs and connecting this construct via a structural model to study their relationships. Uh, this is by Bolan 1989. A partially square structural equation modeling often referred to as PLSM is a combination of interdependence and dependence techniques. The method belongs to the family of statistical model that seek to explain the relationship among multiple variables simultaneously. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the statistical tools uh, that we have today went through three stages of development since the early 1900s. And the first stage was when Carl Pearson started developing correlation and then using it for linear regression. The second stage in the 1950s was when factor analysis started to take shape, and, it, and this era was dominated by gurus like Spearman, Howe, Anderson, Rubin, Thurston, and Lolly. And this also was when path modeling became a tool for analysis. 
due to the limitations inherent in first generation analytical software where you can only work with measured variables and not latent does the second generation analytical techniques called structural equation modeling took shape during third stage in the 1970s herman wolf a norwegian born econometrician and statistician developed a soft modeling technique known as partial least squares pls as complementary to carl Jorescock's hard modeling technique called LISREL. The covariance-based SAM started with LISREL and later produced other softwares, M plus and Lowen. Whereas the variance-based structural equation modeling, which includes analysis like PLS regression, PLS discriminant analysis, PLS PM and PLS SAM, spawn softwares like PLS graph, Excel, Smart PLS and Smart PLS to name a few. Currently, Smart PLS is one of the most uh, widely used software for statistical analysis in Malaysia. PLS was originally developed by Herman Wall for use in econometrics and chemometrics. And this was extended by Lohmuller. And PLS is now widely applied in many social science disciplines, including organizational management, international management, human research management, management information systems, operation management, marketing management, management accounting, strategy management, hospitality management, and supply chain management, to name a few. And next slide, please. OK, as Chin pointed out in 19, uh, 1998, uh, to many social science researchers, uh, the covariance-based procedure is tautologically synonymous with the term SEM. What he meant was, uh, generally, when you talk about SEM, uh, people tend to uh, associate SEM with a software called AMOS, uh, which is not correct. Uh, SEM is a technique, whereas AMOS is a software. Unlike covariance-based SEM, uh, which considers constructs as common factors that explain the co-variation between the indicate, uh, associated indicators, uh, PLSM is a composite-based approach to SEM that uses linear combination of indicator variables as proxies of the conceptual variables under investigation to explain variance of the target construct in the structural model. Uh, according to Richter et al., a PLSM applies to the same class of models as CBSM, structural equation modeling with unobservable variables and measurement error, but has different characteristics and objectives. Uh, I will stop here. Jackie, over to you. Thank you. Next. My next question is to Professor Marco. Since PLS and SCM technique is your forte or is in your blood, could you further elaborate for us why PLS SEM is useful in research? The floor is all yours. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jackie. And um, first off, let me express my uh, gratitude for this uh, kind invitation. It's great to have uh, we're almost 900 people in the forum now. But um, yeah, uh, let me get back to your to your question now. Well, there are many reasons why I believe that PLS is uh, very useful. And to be honest. a bit of time because over time um, thanks to the various discussions that we had with many researchers like you some of you in this forum now and also those that have criticized PLS we have really involved in our understanding what this technique can do and what it also can do because it's important to understand that this indeed is not like the one method that you can use for every type of problem yeah but I think we're going to be elaborating on this in a bit more detail in the in the coming minutes well anyway um, so, from my perspective, the most crucial thing about PLS is really that it is a causal predictive approach. So, what does that mean? So, when you set up a model, you're typically doing this in order to test some hypothesis which, which relates to the relationships among the constructs. So, you specify some type of model, you hypothesize that some construct A has got a positive impact on construct B and this is being derived based on theory and logic. So this is what research is all about. They're taking like the reality, putting it or boiling it down into some manageable model and try to understand what these mechanisms in this reality are. 
Um, this needs to be done also simply because you want to get your work published, right? Um, like using an exploratory approach is typically not seen as very favorable for most uh, journals. So that's why we frame our hypothesis, we engage in causal testing. But at the same time, what we want to do is we want to derive managerial recommendations, right? So you want to come up with prescriptions. You want to tell practitioners what to do. So I'm from the field of marketing. So I, I would never get away without uh, writing a managerial implication section, which reads like, companies should do this and that in order to increase sales or in order to increase customer satisfaction they need to do this and that but such statements are not really causal in nature they're actually predictive in nature because what you're saying here is if the company do, does this then that will happen so these are actually two different things so on the one hand we want to test a causal model which we then refer to like an explanatory modeling approach but at the same time, we want to make predictive statements. And when you use like the classic covariance-based approach, this does not work well together because you're totally in the explanatory worlds. It's all about model testing. Is this a true model or not? This is not what PLS does. PLS tries to combine these two views in one, saying, okay, on the one hand, we want to test the model, and we do not engage in like a strict model testing as you know it from CBSCM, but this comes to the benefit of being able to predict. So we can actually derive, uh, can derive predictive statements uh, based on our model estimates. This is, I believe, the most fundamental advantage of PLS. Um, further advantages include, for example, its ability to work with small sample sizes. I would not overstress this too much, simply because, well, PLS is no civil bullet in that respect. It also needs a decent sample. It's obviously much better to have a large sample because it also improves prediction. Uh, but nevertheless, it's useful, especially in situations where the population is really small. So there's no, no opportunity for gathering lots of observations simply because there are not so many people to ask. So in that setting, PLS is very useful. And finally, something um, I don't want to elaborate on uh, too much, but the efficacy for formative modeling so formative measurement model specifications, one thing that we have seen uh, emerging in the social sciences, especially in marketing and business, simply because it allows to derive more actual recommendations. And because of that, um, well, PLS can accommodate formative uh, mo measurement models, which it's very difficult in covariance based ACM. I think that's a very important characteristic of the method. Uh, thank you for your superb explanation. Uh, it's very clear now. So my next question, I have one interesting question to Professor Christian. Based on your mass experience in publication, how PLS SEM is useful in many dis uh, different disciplines? Next. Yeah, it's, first, uh, welcome from my side. Um, I'm at Hamburg University of Technology in Germany right now. It's uh, a little bit in the, uh, in the morning and uh, we are looking into a splendid day. So I would like to use this opportunity for, to first welcome you all around the globe joining this forum. And secondly, I would like to thank uh, the organizers and Emerald for making this great opportunity and uh, allowing us uh, to offer this uh, fantastic forum. And now I would like to come to uh, Jackie's question, um, looking at uh, the use of uh, PLS SCM uh, across different disciplines. And when you take a look at different disciplines, um, you find certain traditions. And a good starting point would be searching the web of science. And uh, when you look up the web of science and search uh, for a specific method and how often it has been cited, you can easily assess um, uh, the different disciplines in which this keyword uh, was used. And when you, for instance, search for linear regression, you will find uh, that this is still the most popular method, um, multivariate analysis method used, and it's particularly strongly used in the field of medicine. But um, when it comes to structural equation modeling, you will find thousands of hits and um, mentions in publications as well. But uh, here, about 50% of the applications stem from business research and management. So um, structural equation modeling is predominantly used in the business and management discipline. And that's what we also find um, when we um, take a look at PLS-SEM. The, the same holds as uh, to PLS as a specific 
method uh, for structural equation modeling. And uh, even though we find uh, some applications in the areas of uh, psychology, for instance, political and environmental sciences, uh, medicine also has PLS applications, and most interestingly, engineering. Engineering started uh, to use PLS SEM um, quite intensively. And here the main question is to look at uh, the success of engineering projects. So the, our core question in this discipline is uh, similarly to what we do in business research, um, to ask um, for something that is relevant, um, that is uh, the success of a certain outcome, and then to take a look at the key explanators of um, uh, this outcome, and in this case, um, the success of engineering projects. But now focusing on the um, business and management discipline, it all started um, relatively early. Uh, you find first publications in the 1980s, but uh, then it started rolling in the 1990s, and the first disciplines uh, using PLS SEM intensively were certainly management information systems research and marketing. And up to today, you still find the most prominent um, uh, yeah, models uh, in these disciplines. First, it's uh, the technology acceptance model and its successors such as TEM2, TEM3, UTAUD or UTAUD2, which have been used several thousand times in publications and are the most prominent PLS SEM model up to date. And in marketing, it's uh, the American Customer Satisfaction Index model with its uh, different flavors, uh, for example, the European Customer Satisfaction Index model and so on, which also um, disseminated um, in research uh, in thousands of publications. And on these grounds, um, other disciplines in the wider um, management area followed. Um, we now find a strong dissemination in human resource management, for instance, and uh, family business research, tourism and hospitality um, research, sports management, and many, many others. And uh, uh, what we see here is um, that the method um, seems um, to um, be picked up by other disciplines that value um, the goal of um, the approach and what one can do, namely um, to select um, a key construct of interest, um, which, is, uh, uh, which has some desire in research and to find the core explanators, um, which in, uh, in then drive um, the outcomes. And what we did is uh, in the past couple of years, um, we looked into a comparison of um, uh, the research done and we reviewed articles that have been uh, published across disciplines. Here's just an example from human resource management. But what we still find is that uh, MIS research and marketing, they provide the strongest PLS SEM applications because these disciplines have a strong tradition of um, empirical and quantitative uh, research. And when we come to other disciplines, well, um, the applications become somewhat weaker I would not say flawed, but um, uh, there may be some, the one or the other problematic aspect. And that's a key take, key takeaway. Um, if you would like to find a good template and a good blueprint for your research, you may want to take a look at applications of PLS SEM in MAS and marketing. Great and excellent explanation. It's very clear to me right now. Uh, next. Finally, we have our Professor Shell. This question is to you. In what situation when PLS SEM is more appropriate choice than CD SEM? The floor is yours. Oh, it's my pleasure to join the forum. Appreciate that the Professor Ramaya and Marco and the Ringos that introduced the PLS SEM and the Korean best SEM. And let me introduce a little more about the basic of the difference that between the PLS SEM and the Korean based SEM. Originally, the, you will see the slide, the Korean based SEM, you can use it to test and confront the product theory. Especially the theory is strong. Another one is the Korean based SEM is used to minimize the difference between the observatory covariance metric and estimate the Korean metrics. So it's very important to show the goodness of the fit. And in the journal models, at least, we must show 
the chi-square di divided by the degree of freedom, the GFI, HFI, the CFI, NFI, NFI, and RSCA. This is a general model. And originally about the uh, PLSSCM, this is for the theory development and the predictions. And another one is the maximize the explained variance of the endogenous Dalton constructs. So the R square is very important. And now more and more the empirical study that they use the PLSSCM, the next one. Next. Okay, can you do a SEM the research, the two mainstream, the Korean SEM and the PSEM, they have a different uh, statistical technique and the other, so many different layer. So we just know the background of them and the report are a little different. Let me show the Korean base a little bit here. And the minimal requirement, you, you must have the which estimate measure and the maximum likelihood. Explain why you delete the measurement item. The third one, the model fit is very important. The first one, the mean standard deviation correlation. The measurement model, you must have the reliability and validity, especially the discriminated validity. The structure model, you must have the best coefficient and R square. And I recommend about the optional addition depends on your research. We must have the common method bias, the response, non response, or use the first step, also, also can all the cross validation and the coordinality. And about here, today we talk about more about the PLSCM here. And the minimum requirement is why, why use the PLS. The second one is explain why delete the measurement items. The third one, the mean standard deviation in correlation, the minimum model, of course, with the company reality, ABE validity. And here, we emphasize the HTMT, this new discriminated validity, the phase coefficient and R square. And the recommend, but optional addition, they're the same as the Korean best SEM. So I want to, I don't want to say this again. The next one. Okay, so as we reviewed so many papers, we want to emphasize one thing here, that why, why PLS SM is more appropriate choice than the Korean best SEM. I will tell you the two examples. The first one is about a goal. Your research goal is to predict the key target contrast, then please use the PLS SEM. Another one is that your research is an exploratory study or is stand of existing structure theory. Yes, choose the PLS SEM. And if your goal is the theory testing, theory confirmation, and the comparison of the alternative theory, you choose the Korean best SEM. But now, I, with my courses, we extend the PLS SEM, then you can use the PLS SEM to do the comparison of the alternative theory. I will explain this in the next topic. Okay, next one. In general notes, then I write a, a phrase that to provide for the to provide for the research to use is if your risk goal is explanatory and the, the analyze for the predictions and the sample size is smaller due to a Model population. The distribution is not a uh, normality, and the research required the length of variable score for the consequence analysis. Then please use the PLSDM that will help your research more smoothly. Okay, that's all. Uh, great. Uh, good to know from your thoughts. Uh, next. Now, let us move on to the second topic for today on the application of PLS-SCM in research. Next. 